I'm an Air Force Airman. I am a bow hunter. I am a fisherman. I am Mark of all trades. I'm sure that I'm not the only person that has had this happen to me. You're out there on a hunt. You see a deer that you want to get its attention or have it come your way, but it's fixated on something else or just headed in another direction. One of the things that you can use to attract this deer is your grunt call. So one of the ones that I use is the Primos Hardwood Grunter. This call has been around for a long time. It originally came out in 1984 and it's made by Primos. Some of the features that the Hardwood Grunter has is that it has an exhale double reed and it also has an inhale single reed depending on which one that you get. Some of the sounds are a buck with estrus doe, a buck tending to a doe, and two bucks. And one of the cool things that Primos has is that all of their calls, no matter which one that you get, has a lifetime warranty. And I think that that speaks volumes about that company. I mean, clearly, if you know anything about the hunting world, Primos has been around for a long time. And so for them to put their name on their products and back it up with a lifetime warranty, that's huge. You can't beat that. So here I have it. This is the Primos Hardwood Grunner. Um, this one in particularly I've had for about eight years. Um, I had one before this, but I lost it. I think I dropped it in the woods somewhere. So uh, this is definitely my go-to. Um, if you guys use any kind of uh, Primos products, definitely let me know in the comments which one's your favorite. They have a ton of grunt calls, so it's just dealer's choice on which one you like in particular. So this is the one that I like, and I'll give you a couple of reasons as to why that is. I think it goes back to durability for me. So one thing about me is that basically if I'm using something and it works and I don't have to fiddle with it and it doesn't break, I'm going to stick with that for a long time. And it's the same with my bows. I've been shooting Matthews for a while and um, I've been using Primos calls since like Primos 5 when that first came out in the, in the late 90s. Uh, so yeah, I've just been stuck with them and they've been working great. Uh, I would say the majority of the time that I use a call, granted calls aren't 100% success rate, but uh, the ones that I do use and when I use them, I would say that majority of the time, depending on how I use it, it, it works pretty well. This call in particular doesn't have the double read system. This one only has the single read. And I know that there are some out there that do have the double read, but this one does not. So when we take this apart, you can take the tube off just like that. When we take this apart, there's the reed right there. So you can see here that this is a single reed. This one only has one reed. Um, on a double reed system, clearly there would be two of them. So you would have one right here, and then there would be another one down here at the bottom, hence double reed system. There's an O-ring on here, and that is so that you can figure out which one you wanna put it on. And so there's different little notches on here so that you can put it to the appropriate one. And I mean, if you're quiet, you can definitely do this in the field. You know, you just take it, you slide it down to the one that you want, put it back on, that made no noise at all. And then just kind of move like that. So the double read system does work a little bit better, for sure, because you can inhale on one and exhale on the other one, and it's a really quick system if you already have them preset on your read. For carrying purposes, you could just carry it like this. It does come with a lanyard. And so, I mean, it does look like a little bit of a duck call with this. But, I mean, you can you can muffle it with your hand and direct it however you want. You can also put the tube back on. And that'll give it a little bit more of a deep sound. Some guys do say that you can change the direction of it. So you can have it going behind you or over to the side and front. And then you can get a little bit deeper with the tube. Do a little quick test for you so you can hear it with the tube and one without the tube. So that's with the tube. And here it is without it. So it sounds a little bit more like a duck. Just, I don't know. You tell me. What do you guys think? <laughs> you know, uh, would you guys go into the woods with that one? Personally, I like the way that it sounds with the tube, but... Maybe you guys have had success without it. Let me know in the comments. So when you're grunting at a deer, the first couple grunts, he may not hear you. 
you might, depending on how far out the deer is, you might have to go a little bit harder on your grunt and make it a little bit louder so that he can hear you. But one of the big things that you, from my experience, again, all of this stuff is from my experience, so if you have a different experience, let me know. But you don't want to overcall. If you overcall, you could scare the deer away. He could not be interested because it sounds like a younger deer because he's constantly calling. Um, you definitely want to play like that cat and mouse game with the deer. You want to make it just enough where the deer's curious as to, that sounds like a deer, let me go over there and investigate and see what it is. And, and usually most of the deer, if you just make a couple, a couple sounds out of this grunt call, they'll almost pinpoint you exactly to where that sound's coming from. So if you're hunting with a bow, I mean, you can definitely, just with a couple calls, get a deer to come well within bow range because they're going to come and figure out what that sound is. And one of the big things is once that deer is coming towards you and you see the deer has kind of locked into maybe where they think the pinpoint is of where you're at, don't keep calling. <laughs> like, you've already got him. He's already on the string. You, you know, you're just going to possibly make it worse if you keep calling. So he's going to he's going to keep looking versus thinking that you're still maybe a couple hundred yards out. So, you know, once he starts making his way towards you, you got him. You're good. Just let, let him come towards you a little bit more. I did a video a while back on the Primos can and a lot of you had a lot of good comments on there and there was good conversation in there. And I'm just giving you a reference point in case you're looking for another call other than the hardwood grunter. But when you're using that, you want to use that sparingly. According to Primos' website, they say that you should use it maybe once every 30 to 45 minutes. And then they also said, be careful because this works super well, especially during the rut season when bucks are looking for does to mate and the deer can sneak up from behind you. I guess it's happened to a lot of people. So just when you're using that can, or you can use the can with the hardwood grunner and just use them together. But again, just be careful because the deer could come from any direction. So there's a few kinds of grunts that you can use on this hardwood grunner or any kind of grunt call that you have. It doesn't specifically have to be for this one. There's a few different types of grunts that you can use with your call. doesn't necessarily have to be a hardwood grunner. It can be any kind of call that you have. This will be fine. The first one that we want to use is called the attention grunt. And so with that, it's a half a second to one second grunt just to get the deer's attention. He might be walking out maybe 100 yards and you're just trying to let him know that you're in the area. So you're just going to do a half a second to a second. <coughs> just something like that. So then he knows, hey, there's another deer in the area. The second one that we want to talk about is called a tending grunt. So this grunt is all about when a buck is on a doe. And usually when you see this in real life, it's usually a couple grunts and then you see the buck chasing the doe. And that one will be two to three grunts in a row as if the buck's chasing the doe. And I'll, and I'll show you what that sounds like. So there's one, and then you could do another one. Again, a little aggressive, but uh, you kind of get the picture of what, what's going on here. So it's just talking to the doe, letting him know that, hey, I'm, I'm behind you. Or if there's any other bucks in the area, he knows that, hey, I'm on this doe. And so when we're talking about calls, again, we're going back to the estrus bleat, the can made by Primos. And with that, that one, again, is used during the rut. And it's extremely effective just from my experience. And again, you go back to that video, a lot of people in the comments said that it's worked for them as well. So definitely check that out if you guys have any questions about the can. But that's another good tactic that you can use with any kind of grunt. So when we're breaking down the read, there's a couple things written on the read that I want to explain to you so that you know exactly what each one is. So if we move down the read, you have the estrus bleat, which is EB. You have the doe bleat, which is DB. You have the doe grunt, which is DG. You have the young deer, which is YD. The mature buck, MB. And then lastly, you have the trophy buck, TB. We've gone through all the components of this deer call. And even if you perfect this call and are a world-class deer hunter, that won't guarantee that every single deer will beeline to your hunting spot just because you made a grunt. This is just like with everything else. It's a tool that you can use. It's supposed to be used possibly to give you that slighter upper hand advantage in the deer woods. Let me know if you found any of these tips helpful or useful, and I'll catch you in next week's video. I want to share my own personal small win story with you guys. So here recently, 
I think my push mower is on its last leg. I don't think it's going to give me a couple more mows out of it this year, so um, I've been kind of putting a little bit of money aside each paycheck to get me a riding lawnmower, knowing that I'm going to need one eventually. And so I got myself the Craftsman T110. And so I've been looking into this. This is something that I've wanted for quite a while. And again, I know it's not a zero turn or anything else like that, but I like the old man style sitting down, going slow, looking at the yard marks and the lines in the yard. So I don't think you can beat that. So um, that's definitely something that I'm, I'm super proud of and I'm thankful and blessed that I was able to manifest this moment and get me a riding lawnmower. And I know to some of you guys, this might not be a big deal, but for me, this is this is huge. And I'm super thankful that and blessed that I was able to get this riding lawnmower because to me, it means a lot. So if you guys want to share your small win story on Get Featured on the channel, definitely shoot me an email at markofalltrades at gmail.com and you might possibly get the chance to have your story featured on the channel. I appreciate you guys tuning in and I'll catch you in next week's video.